Hey, Shane McMurray from The Weather Report. In this episode, I interview Tom Ellis, who is a photographer in Seattle, Washington. Tom's been in the business for 40 years, so a lot of great experience here. Enjoy. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I want to talk, um, talk about your business, what you do. Uh, I want to talk about what goes into the work that you do. I feel like a lot of times um, uh, people are just, um, you know, price is always the first thing that they care about sometimes. And... Um, not that they don't care about value, but I think we need to, I'd like to educate a little bit around that so people understand that it's not just, you know, that's not the first thing. Um, I'd like to talk about what advice you might have for couples uh, and then um, get into the business side of it. Like what's working today? What's not working today? Uh, any specific advice you might have for people coming up in the industry? Um, you and I are going to retire someday, so, you know, let's help them if we can. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we'll talk about some wedding stories or business stories, whatever you want to do, and uh, and anything else you want to talk about. So, all right. All right. So tell me good. about your business, Tom. Where are you at? Like, what city are you in, and and everything? All right, I am in Seattle. Uh, actually, I'm located in a suburb of Seattle, but uh, Seattle is my main market. Uh, although. I regularly travel all over Washington State, and I have done weddings as far away as uh, Massachusetts and Vermont and California, and uh, I'm still looking for that couple that wants me to go to Fiji with them, but yeah. that'll, that'll come sometime, I hope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, traveling's fun. I, I still like to do that sort of thing, so when I have couples that want me to travel, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been doing this, this will be the beginning of year 41. 41. So, wow. Yeah. I started in 1980. You started young. You must have been yeah. young, like 10 years old doing photography. Well, that's right. I, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. uh, um, so let's talk a little bit about what goes into the work, um, that you do. So, you know, let's say you meet, you know, let's talk about like the meeting part, like what, how, what do you, um, what, what's the process for a meeting now? I mean, how, how's that going? What are you doing? Well, okay. Um, usually these days it's an email. Um, you know, occasionally it'll be a text message, but usually I hear from people by email and, uh, you pretty quickly find out, you know, who is just tire kicking and, you know, mm -hmm. just basically price shopping versus someone who has, actually looked at my website and seen my work and likes what I do and, uh, and, and wants to talk with me. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that probably eliminates half the people right off, you know, because it's amazing the number of people that even though they're on some place where there's my website, I've got all my pricing information right there. They, they don't even look. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I then, uh, the couples that, you know, are serious, we, nearly always get together and meet in person. Okay. Um, although there are quite a few couples where um, I might never even meet them until the day of the wedding because they're contacting me from out of town and they're coming here for a destination wedding. Okay. Um, I've had couples contact me from Europe, from Japan, uh, back before the internet, those were some really interesting, uh, you know, conversations because long distance phone calls and things. But, uh, I usually have, you know, every year or two, I'll have a couple of weddings that are, again, they, they're from out of the country and we don't meet until day of the wedding. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Do you talk, do you talk, do you find that you're doing any video interviews or is it mostly, um, you know, like, uh, it's always, a uh, yeah. person, um, with the people who are distance, occasionally we will do a Skype thing, but sometimes that doesn't even happen. I've, I've been a little puzzled by that because it's so easy to do our, well, but again, maybe for some people where they are, it's not easy. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, Usually lots and lots of emails. Um, I really like to at least have a phone call with someone if I can. Um, yeah. Emails, 
I mean, they're great in terms of they're quick, but it's really hard to have a conversation and ask and answer questions. Yeah. Um, where the phone or a video chat, you know, of course you can do that. Um, and of course in person is best of all, but like I say, sometimes that's just not possible. Yeah. So let's say someone books you, what, what, what do you go through process wise before the day? Um, I give me a little more specificity well, there in terms of, <laughs> you know, I, you know I'm, I, I book you for my wedding, right? Yeah. Um, I've signed the contract, given you some money. You know, what do you do from now okay. until the day of my wedding? Okay. Um, first thing I usually do is I will, uh, I'll, I'll talk to them about uh, what their plans are for the day. Try to get a feel for how they're going to be doing the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, as I tell the couples that I'm working with, and the, the couples just actually when they're coming to talk with me, the photographer is the vendor that you are going to be working the most closely with on the day of the wedding. And you guys need to be on the same page. You need to make sure that you get along well together. Um, and I want to develop that relationship with the couple before the wedding so that we do know each other and uh, they have a good idea of you know, what I'm planning on doing, I know what they want me to do, yeah. um, and go from there. So I will uh, give them, uh, I'll start off, I'll give them a, a real basic photo list and say, okay, look this over and, you know, make additions, make subtractions and figure out what, uh, you know, what you want to do with this. And then I'll get that and look and then we'll talk a little bit. And uh, depending on the venue they're at, I'll be talking about, okay, so your, your ceremony, it's, okay, say it's, it's an uh, early July wedding, mm -hmm. and your ceremony is at two in the afternoon, and it's outdoors. All right, if it's a sunny day, it's going to be bright, it's going to be all kinds of crazy, you know, shadows and stuff going on. So we want to think about where we're going to go to take your pictures, where you're going to get the best photo results. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll discuss, maybe we're going to do things on site. Maybe we're going to go to a park that's nearby there or something. Maybe we're going to go a little further away because there's a place that they really want to get photos that shows the area. Um, couples that come in uh, from out of the area, they want to have something that shows, hey, we were married in Seattle. And so we'll go someplace where you, know, you get the space needle in the background and maybe Mount Rainier and some of the other landmarks. Um, and do that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so if uh, with most of the couples, we end up doing an engagement session, which is great because that really gives us a chance to get to know each other. Uh, grooms can be notoriously camera shy. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. um, it's nice for them to realize, no, that this isn't like going to the dentist and getting teeth pulled. This is actually kind of fun. Yeah. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll be able to spend time that way and uh, they find out what it's like to actually work with me. Um, and that is a, a big help for the day of the wedding because they know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, that works out really well. And uh, as, as no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was saying as we get closer to the wedding, we'll be talking more. And again, uh, I'm always looking ahead. Uh, as we get to within a week or so, I'm watching the weather forecast. Sure. Yeah. Um, so we have plan B in place, you know, because it's Seattle. Yeah. I don't care what day of the year it is. It can rain here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've had some situations where, you know, it's the weekend that's supposed to be the perfect weekend. And it poured rain. And the outdoor wedding had to be moved indoors. And, ah. Uh, yeah. So um, you have to have uh, things in place. You got to, you know, usually the couples are aware, but there are some <laughs> that aren't. Yeah. And so it, it's nice to, you know, get them thinking about, you know, that plan B. Yeah. Cool. So how, I mean, sounds like a lot of preparation. How many hours do you think you put in just to prepare, think about, meet with the couple, get things Ooh. squared away prior to the, the actual event? Wow. 
you know, that's something where I think I have almost purposely decided not to think about it because it, it, it makes me realize how much more time <laughs> I spend on this. That's it, important, the, Tom. That's yeah, right. No, it's true. It's true. And it, it, it does vary with couples, you know, sure. when I, when, you know, it's, it's got to be, oh, easy 10, 12 hours. Okay. Uh, you got 10 possibly, or 12 hours. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Possibly yeah. With some more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, so what, what would you say? Um, so day of, right. You shut, you show up to the day of the event. I mean, how many hours are you there for a day? Different wedding packages. I've got, again, depending on the time of the year, I've got packages that run anywhere from four hours for couples who are trying to do things, you know, inexpensively and, you know, they maybe have a small wedding yeah. to do an all day deal. Um, so I'll go middle of the road, a six hour package. Um, and for something like that, um, again, depending on where it is, if it's a location that I know well, mm -hmm. I'm not worried about getting there really early because I know what I'm going to be dealing with in terms of light. And I'm getting something on here saying your internet connection is unstable. I hope that doesn't do anything to us. No, I'm not saying you're good. Okay. Okay. Um, and, uh, so I, I like to get to the venue early enough to make sure that everything is set up the way that it's supposed to be set up. Right. Uh, you know, I, one of the things that I discovered years ago that I have to tell a couple about is make sure your florist arrives early to get your flowers because there will be times when the florist shows up half an hour before the ceremony. Right. And so the bride doesn't have her bouquet during the photo session. Oh, yeah. Um, and so things like that. Um, so I like to get there. Again, if it's a place that I haven't been before, I'm going to get there a good hour or more early so I can walk the grounds, check it out again, look for where the lighting is going to be best. Think about, uh, again, if it's an outdoor thing, and during the summer here, probably 80% of them are outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, find where they're planning on doing the ceremony and if it is in a place where the bride and the groom are going to be basically facing into the sunshine see if there's a way that maybe we can change that mm -hmm. um, i mean it's not pleasant for them at all but it's i guess if you have a situation where it's either the the audience has to look into the sun to see the bride and groom or the bride and groom are getting blinded by the sun as they look back toward the audience I'm going to make it easier on the bride and the groom. Yeah, um, sure. they're, not, they're, they're squinting at each other during the whole ceremony. Yeah. Um, but uh, I like to, uh, you know, depending on the other vendors who are there, I like to talk with the DJ, um, make sure that the, the timetable that he or she has matches what I have been told. Mm -hmm. uh, I work very closely with the DJ when a DJ is present because we need to be working off of each other yeah, and making sure. sure we keep things moving. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and, and sometimes we find that I have a different timetable than the DJ does. It's like, <laughs> oh, time, to go, time to go talk to the couple and find out what's happening here. Yeah. Uh, so just things like that. Um, and then there are some weddings where I'm the only professional there. The, the ceremony is being done by a friend and the music is being done by someone with their iPhone. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only one who really knows kind of how things work. Um, I normally know this well in advance about that and then kind of help them lay out how they want to do the day sure. um, one of my 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 big rules I guess when I talk with couples is that it's their wedding and it has to happen the way that they want yeah. you know not the way that I want or the way that mom wants or whatever but I want to help them organize things in a way that things are going to work the way that they want them to uh, a lot of couples, uh, well, for the, the, the pose or formal pictures where we've got to deal with the bride and the groom and the wedding party and the family members, it's amazing the number of couples that will think, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to do that in 20 minutes. And they have eight people in their wedding party 
and maybe 16 family members. And uh, that's just not practical. Right. Um, you know, if and there have been times when, you know, couples have said, no, that's all I want. And it's like, well, okay, then we'll take whatever pictures we can in that time. But realistically, when I can talk with couples and work this out ahead of time, they'll realize, oh, yeah, we're going to need an hour, hour and a half, maybe more if we wanted to go somewhere else or we wanted to really spend time with the pictures. Sure. Um, again, different couples have different priorities as to, you know, how important the pictures are to them, whether they want a lot of posed pictures, whether all they want are pictures of things as they're happening. Uh, again, that's sort of that, that preliminary time talking with them and finding out how they want things to work. Um, but, uh, so, so in a day you spend maybe how, I mean, on average, cause it's varies, right? So we'll yeah. say it's your average day is six hours. Is it 10 hours? Well, like if it's a six hour wedding, I'm going to, on average, I'm going to be there an hour ahead of time. And once the wedding's over, you know. Bride and groom usually usually they go and then I'm packing up and heading out, mm -hmm. and um, so that doesn't take me long. So it's not like I have a lot of after time at the the wedding site. Um, some days, though, I mean, I'll have some weddings where it's a twelve hour wedding. Yeah. Uh, where I'm, I start off with the bride as she is at the the beauty parlor doing hair and makeup. The bride. Yeah, that's and, a fourteen hour day, right? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, and. But you know, those are fun. Um, yeah. I had one a uh, couple of years ago that was a New Year's Eve deal. And I started with the, the bride, you know, early on in the morning. And, you know, they had the football, they, they turned the football game on for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> they knew that there wasn't all that much I was going to be taking pictures of for part of the time. But this was at a hotel room and they were all getting ready. So I'd be snapping pictures and, oh, check the score real quick. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, that one we started at 10 in the morning, and I think we finished at 2 in the morning. Right. Because it was, you know, it went through New Year's Eve and, uh, and on into the, the wee hours. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it can, it can vary a lot. Okay. Uh, so but what about after? Do you spend a lot of time after the wedding doing, um, doing editing and stuff like that? You spend a lot of time? Yeah, I... I want all of the pictures that they receive to look at least as good as things actually were that day. Um, I like to explain to couples if they're not into photography, I try to explain a little bit about what professional cameras do and how most professionals shoot using what's called raw format, which I'm sure you're familiar with, yeah. but mm -hmm. you know, and how, what they're used to using with their phones or whatnot are JPEGs and why you want raw, but why when you use raw, you have to edit those images afterwards. Otherwise the color could be wrong. The exposure could be wrong. Lots of other things. Yeah. So I spend, um, this is all that I do as, as a job. So I, I basically the next day, um, sometimes the same night, I, I'm getting everything right in the computer and I start editing. I like to do it when it's all fresh in my head too. Mm -hmm. um, and I will take and I'll go through and, uh, you know, I might call out some of the images where things, you know, someone turned it the wrong time or just bad image. Yeah. But most of them I go through in every image, I color correct and I adjust for exposure. I might do some cropping. I do not tend to get into heavy duty Photoshop work like opening closed eye unless it's what I can see is a crucial picture. Sure. Um, I might do that later if someone uh, says to me, uh, yeah, can you, can you please do that? I really want this one. Sure. Um, but Again, I want to make all those pictures look right before they ever see them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's very time consuming. It's a yeah. uh, 10 hours, 12 hour process for you. I, it's, I, I usually figure it takes roughly twice as long to edit as it does to shoot. Okay. You know, so, uh, um, and you know, yeah, again, with, with, a, with a 12 hour wedding, it's not like I'm shooting all 12 hours, you know, sure, but sure. Yeah. But you've got you've got at least ten hours of photo, right? And so yeah, it, it's just a lot of work. Yeah, 
So, so, I mean, generally you probably got 40 hours into a wedding, right? I mean, 30 to 40 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, I figured, you know, 10, 12 hours before, six to eight, you know, and then, yeah, yeah, 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably 30 hours, pretty easy. And uh, for, um, you know, for, um, what does your beginning package start at? Like if I wanted to hire you for my, my event? Uh, base like a four hour package. Um, you're looking at about 1600 bucks. Again, depending on the day of the week, that, that'd be like midweek. Um, six hour package is about 2,400 bucks. Uh, eight hour package, 3000. Um, and then the all day thing gets more. And the other packages, you know, the, the more expensive packages tend to have more goodies too. So yeah. that, well, and then, you know, everything is not as custom usually, right? I mean, it's not like, yeah. it's, it's not like, you know, it's great because I think you need to have like, here's my starting position, right? So that people can generally understand, like, here's my starting position. Uh, but at the end of the day, everything is custom in this business, right? Nothing's the same. It's just, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, when I, when I started off. I thought, hey, I'm going to make this because I know how I'd want to do it. If it was me coming in, I'd want to be able to design everything just the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I had a basic price, and then everything else was customizable. Mm -hmm. But people couldn't handle it. Yeah. They're so used to being prepackaged that, you know, they were, ah, oh, what do I do? I have too many choices. So I started off, and I had two packages, then I had three, then I had four, then I had five. And then it was like, no, I now I got too many packages. Mm -hmm. So I dropped down the number of packages. And then I just tell people, look, here's kind of base packages to start with. But yeah, we can customize on anything that you want here. So if you find that, uh, oh, I really like this package, but I need that better album. Can I do that? Sure, no problem. Um, and that's worked out really well. It still gets a little confusing at times because people think you need these packages are the only choices. It's like, no, 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 no. You can do whatever yeah. you want. Sure, sure. Um, so I want to just uh, um, respect your time, Tom. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, the business side of this. Uh, so what would you say business-wise is, uh, is, is not working well for you right now? Um... I think the, the thing that I find is the biggest waste of time is social media. Okay. Um, I do Instagram and Facebook. Um, I have an, a, a ridiculous number of pictures up on Instagram, but I, again, maybe I, and this could be me, maybe I just don't understand Instagram, but uh, I find that it's, it's basically a waste of time. Facebook, people, once they know me, yeah, they're following me on Facebook. But for new people to find me there, I don't know how many people really do. Uh, most of the people, customers that I hear from, uh, you know, they found me, uh, well, probably most of them are through word of mouth, but then the others have found me online, you know, through my website. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the social media, I think, is just a, a big waste of time for me, at least. So you think you, most of your business is coming from, you would say, a referral, word of mouth, people that you know? Uh, have done yeah. That. yeah. That's great. That's, well, you know, again, you, after you do a lot of weddings, yeah. you get your name out there and that, that helps a lot. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, what would you say is working well in business right now? Well, word of mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the... Uh, so in other words, make sure you're building relationships with people as you're, as you're growing your business, make sure you're building relationships with them because word of mouth is, is super valuable. Yeah. We're about networking the same way. It's, you know, I've uh, a couple of the local DJs that I've worked with for a long, long time. You know, we're, we're always sending people back and forth to each other. Um, and some of the venues, again, that they know me well, they always make sure that my name is given out. Um, so the networking, uh, is very important. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, if, if, if you leave a venue 
with a bad taste in their mouth as a vendor, you know, you're not ever going to hear from anybody who goes there. But if you're somebody that they go, oh, wow, this guy was great. And, you know, he sent me some pictures, you know, of the event and everything that I can use on my social media. Yeah. Uh, then uh, they think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what specific advice would you have for couples today? Um, in terms of picking a photographer or do I guess. So, so any, anything wedding, right? Like I'm getting, yeah. married, what's, if you, if you knew me and, um, we talked, I mean, what okay. advice would you give me for, okay. for well, the, like I can say my, my number one thing that I always tell couples is remember that it's your wedding and you should do it the way that you want to do it. Um, and, uh, if that means that you're going to do everything by iPhones, um, and you don't even have a real photographer, but that's the way you are. Well, okay, cool. Do it your way. Um, you, uh, but you should, your ceremony should be the ceremony that you want, not the one that your mom has suggested because this is the way she really wanted her wedding to be, but it wasn't, but, Oh, we got to have it for you. Yeah. Um, and or your friends have said, oh, didn't you see this on you? But you need to do it like that. If that's not you, why do that? Mm -hmm. I had a couple um, just a couple of weeks ago where um, well, I, I consider myself a bit of a, of a geek in terms of into things like Star Trek and Star Wars and all that sort of stuff. I have a comic collection, the whole business. And Wait, have you seen the latest Star Wars? Huh? Yeah. These guys found me through a site called Off the Bride, where I advertise, and it's again, it's for the little bit more you know, off, the, little different couples. Yeah, gotcha. And they came and they found me, and their wedding, they had a con they had how to train your dragons was kind of the main theme, nice. and plus the bride and groom both had lightsabers. He had a Star Trek pin on his lapel. Uh, their cake was a Hobbit house. Nice. Uh, it was like it was it was fantastic. I just I love these guys. Uh, they, and here this is if you can see this here. They get this is the hand of the king from nice. Game of Thrones. They they got me this lapel to wear at the wedding. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so you know again these guys really made it theirs. It was it was a unique wedding and. That's really cool when people do that. And um, so I, I love to see couples do that sort of thing. And it doesn't have to be that far out. But again, you should make it your wedding, not what you think somebody else thinks it should be. Yeah. So uh, on the other side, what about for businesses? What, what would you, um, you know, you and I are going to retire one, one day. And, um, you know, what advice would you give businesses that are coming up in the, in the photography space? Um... I guess with photography, my biggest pet peeve right now is the number of photographers, F-A-U-X photographers, as we go, go to Costco, buy a kit camera, and start advertising that, hey, I'm a professional photographer, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, come see me, and, you know, hire me, and I'm cheap, and, if you want to get into the business, do it right. Make sure you know what you're doing before you're taking a chance on really screwing up some couple's one chance at having these good photos of their wedding. Uh, I get on average at least one or two calls a year from couples whose photographer butchered their wedding and they want me to try and recreate some things, maybe go out with them in their wedding clothes and get some pictures so they have some nice shots of them uh, dressed like they were at their wedding because the photos were a disaster. Yeah. Uh, there are way too many people out there who have no business uh, taking pictures, uh, you, know, you know, convincing couples that, hey, well, I'm a great deal, hire me. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it's, it's bad. I, I really want to see, you know, photographers, again, it gives a, a bad name to the entire industry. Um, you know, it's so, you know, learn, learn what you're doing, get the right equipment so you can handle the different situations. Um, you know, go, boy, you know, at least 
study up on things. Better off, you know, intern with someone for a while. Find out the find out if, if it's really what you want to do because it's a little harder than it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so what, uh, tell me what your, um, worst or best could be worst or best, uh, wedding story or business story you got for me. All right. I'll, I'll give you my best. Um, this would be about 25 years ago. So in the days of film, uh, and the wedding was probably 30 miles from any kind of civilization. It was out on the Olympic Peninsula, um, and you know, probably it was a good hour and a half drive for me to get there. Beautiful church out in the woods. Just is this big, gorgeous Catholic church. I was just like, why did they build this out here? Right. And, you know, and so we get there, and it's a, a big Catholic wedding. You know, the bride, these probably, I think there were six or eight bridesmaids, and I get there early, you know, because we're going to get pictures of the, the women all getting ready. And I get there, and sure enough, everybody's running around in circles and finishing up the makeup. Okay, it's time to get on the dress now. And so they, they open up the bride's dress bag, and it's not her dress. Oh, no. It's not her dress. And of course, panic. You know, my God, no. The place where the dress came from is in Seattle, which is an hour and a half if you were flying, um, you know, in the car. And, you know, it's a Saturday, the place isn't even open and they're calling, trying to find out what's happening and they can't reach anybody. And after about 10 minutes, I think it was the maid of honor, um, is kind of, she says, you know, you might as well try it on. It looks like it's at least close. And okay, fine. And they try, and it's darn near a perfect fit. <laughs> wow. And, and you know, it's so like, oh, wow. And then, and then the bride, <laughs> the same woman says, you know, that's actually nicer than your dress. <laughs> 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 so, you know, it ended up, every, everything worked out great. Um, and the wedding went on. <laughs> and I don't think anybody knew you know, until afterwards, who wasn't part of that, that there wasn't the correct dress or anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the uh, <laughs> the fact that it did work out, and obviously there was a, some sort of weird deal where, yeah, they were the same sizes and something got swatted that's, over. That's but cool. uh, that's, that was just, you know, talk about lucky. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that, that, that could have been the worst story right there, but instead it could have been, right? I mean, initially it's uh, sounded like, man, this could be the worst story, right? But yeah. uh, that, could, that, that that's great. It turned out that way. Yeah. So. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. I hope that you found it helpful. Please share it with other people. Also, if you're getting married or you work in the wedding industry, I would love to interview and share your information with other people. Send me a text, 520-399-8580, or shoot me an email at letschat at wedding.report.